there's one thing you need to know about this is if you're a old time motor carrier, uh, online technology based operations is, is not the option in the future. It, it is the future. And if you're not integrating with online, you're not going to be doing business in a few years down the road. So uh, that's the future. Is that pretty true? Yeah, you got to say yes, Warren. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. No. There's your clicker there. See, I appreciate that. Well, as Skip mentioned, my name is Warren Simpson. Um, just a little background about for me is that I'm a football official. And in fact, I'm officiated just about every high school sport other than wrestling and lacrosse. So I like to think of myself as being among friends, and I see a lot of potential recruits out here. So, touchdown safety, right? <laughs> um, the, uh, I also do, I'm a licensed tax preparer, so some of the things you probably may not know about me. Uh, I also teach at a community college in, in, in Salem called Chemeketa Community College. In fact, uh, the classes I had on, so I teach two Saturday classes and a Thursday night class, and the two Saturday classes were, I thought this might be a tough crowd, but those guys are all inmates, so I went to the uh, state prison and also at the Sandy Hook Correctional. So, uh, and then also I work for that agency down south that I think you guys have mentioned a few times at the FMCSA. Um, we were going to try to have uh, Karen, Craig, and Sherry Sell come down today, or come up today, I should say, uh, but they were. Uh, Karen couldn't make it. Um, if you've called in the office before, you probably talked to Karen. She's our transportation assistant. Let's see some heads nodding. Uh, and also, Sherry Sella, she's our new program analyst. So she pretty much works with me. Now, I, met, I saw, saw the earlier, Dave mentioned the unsatisfactory, the conditional, the upgrades. Um, I pretty much handle all the unsatisfactory upgrades and try to track those and assist customers uh, with getting their ratings upgraded before they ever go out of service. To me, that's a lack of communication. If we have a carrier that goes out of service based on an unsat rating, then I'm not communicating with the carrier and I'm not getting something done. So I try to be, hopefully, if you ever have that situation or a conditional, we're trying to help out our carrier. So that's kind of my focus. Um, as far as uh, the other things that I do is we also have to, I process all the enforcement cases in our office. So, and I also approve all of the, upgrade, uh, the upgrades to get those sent off, and I also do the approvals for the compliance reviews. So uh, this, we have something like 30 state inspectors that, uh, that uh, process compliance reviews, and then we have five of our investigators that um, process compliance reviews. So you were right, Dave. And we also do focused investigations, which are not a full review, but more of a quicker type of review. So. Um, with that uh, football theme, does anybody know who Cam Newton's backup quarterback is? No, I didn't think so either. Well, the reason why I ask that is the person in our agency, well, in my office, my boss is Andy Eno, and Andy has been on the national team for this. So you're kind of get Cam got a little injured, so you kind of get his, his backup when we go over. In fact, the office joke is. It's unified registration system because I always call it UCR. I get them confused. I don't know if you do, but I do all the time. Andy's always correcting me about warning. You're going to be talking about unified registration system, not unified carrier registration. So if I make that mistake today, that's probably because I get the you have so many acronyms. So many acronyms. Anyway, uh, well, let's talk about the URS. Got the acronym correctly. Um, the, uh, so this has actually started uh, started in December last month. Um, any new carrier that's going to be applying for authority for a DOT number uh, will basically be under the new system, which means they're going to go online and they're going to do all uh, an all online process. Uh, what the URS has done is it's consolidated. Let's see, the MCS 150, the MCS 150B, the OP1. How many of you have actually ever had to fill out one of those forms? Okay. How many of you have actually called our office? All right, talked to Karen. How many of you have ever talked to me? Oh, God. All right. 
Well, I have a few business cards, so if you have any, when I'm done, if you have any questions, feel free to grab me. I'll give you a card and whatnot. So it's, and it's been nice to meet a few folks who I've only talked to on the phone. They don't really let me out too much. So, uh, okay. So December last month, uh, December 16th. This actually started. We are now anyone that's a new entity that's trying to get authority, a DOT number. Uh, how many of you are cargo tank facility operators? <coughs> How about freight forwarders? Well, one freight forwarder, okay. Brokers? How many of you are in here are brokers? No brokers, okay. How many of you need a hazardous material safety permit? Just one. Oh, a couple. Good. Okay, so that used to be OMCS 150B. Now it's all incorporated into the new URS. The, the form is called the MCSA1. It's funny to hear people say our name, our agency's name, because I always rolls off my tongue just as, it's pretty tough as well. So I usually just say, oh, this is Warren Motor Care Safety, but anyway. Uh, how about, inter, inter, we have inter, intermodal equipment providers? None, and any motor carriers? Good. I always like the signal. That's an invalid fair catch signal, by the way. We're still recording, so. Uh, let's see, next. <laughs> So this is actually, like I said, occurred. So prob probably this audience here is probably not new entities, although you could be. If, uh, as of December last month, we started the change to so the online processing, the online format um, is now for anyone trying to get authority or DOT number, okay? Um, so that would include the MC number, the FF number, and basically the US DOT number all being rolled into one number. So that started, um, <clears throat> and if you have questions, the person to call, and if, you're, if you have someone in your office that's trying to process that, Karen will usually answer the phone and can probably walk you through it um, as far as the step-by-step. -step. It's all electronic, all online. Uh, let's see. Next slide. Let's see. Um, the key date, though, that, that was the URS was the rollout was in December. So the key date is September 31st or 30th of this coming of this year. Um, the US DOT number is now going to be the only identifier. So the MC number and the FF number is no longer going to be in place. Uh, there'll be one streamlined electronic registration process, which means you'll go online and you'll file the MCSA1. That'll take care of all of those DOT requirements. Uh, if you need authority, if you need um, broker authority, freight forwarder authority, all of that. Also, the hazmat safety permit as well. If you need that, instead of filling out the MCS 150B, you'll just be answering a few questions electronically, online in the system. Uh, it takes about 30 to 45 minutes, unless you need help, you get stuck. Um, each registration <clears throat> will now cost $300, so to get a DOT number, it's kind of a barrier to entry, barrier to entry now, the DOT number will cost $300. If you're interstate, it'll be $300 still for authority, broker authority, freight port authority, all of those types of authorities. Um, if you're intrastate, you won't have to pay the $300 fee. Okay? Uh, let's see. And we will be, um, all applicants will be automatically screened to assess the safety risk, uh, including the risk for reincarnation, which takes a lot of our time because we have carriers that, let's say they've been put out of service, they were unfit, unsat, and they decide to go and start a new business. So <coughs> oftentimes they'll apply for authority. Um, you, you know, so if you know, so let me know. I have a take a list. Anyway, we're supposed to. <laughs> We're supposed to we're we're supposed to um, go and investigate those, and then we it's a lot of work for our office, for our investigators, and for our attorneys. But we will if we have found a carrier that has been unfit on set and they started a new company, we will tie that in essence chameleon carrier tag, okay. and basically their unsat will go forward and they'll be penalized. So all of that. So just some some of the things. If you see a company like that, feel free to let us know. Uh, we will uh, investigate. The key here, though, is $300 end of September <coughs> and one DOT number, and that's all we're going to be using. Um, also, <coughs> another change in September will be the, <coughs> if you're a new motor carrier. So last month, December, new motor carriers, they all had to go through the process. Now, also in September of this year, if you're a new motor carrier and you're hauling hazardous material and you're private, 
okay, or if you are exempt for hire, you will have to file your insurance with the agency electronically and online. Okay, and basically your insurance company will be sending a file. Um, the, where this comes up a lot in our office, the private hazmat. A lot of carriers don't know about this, but you may not you may not think you're a hazardous material transporter or carrier, but if you put anything that has a gas tank or a fuel tank on, let's say, a flatbed, and you transport it, so backhoe, uh, lawnmower, anything that has fuel in it, you put it on a vehicle as a private company and you cross state lines with it, you're considered a hazard, hazardous material carrier. Okay. The um, <coughs> excuse me, the hazmat rules apply. However, the important part here is that you have to register yourself as hazardous material, and your insurance requirement is a million dollars. Outside of that, the hazmat rules are essentially pretty much exempt for that type of commodity. But we get that a lot with carriers. Oh, yeah, well, it shows seven hundred fifty thousand, and we come in to do a review, and they only have seven hundred fifty, and we find that they're hauling hazardous material in a tank, and they carry it across state lines. So if you have any questions on that, Jess will help you out later. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but we do get that call a lot, and the carriers do seem like they're surprised by that, that they have to go get that million dollar coverage. The other thing is the new, the new carriers that are filing will also have to, for private and exempt for hire, they're also going to have to file that VOC3. That's the designation of process agent. So that means they'll have to hire one of the blanket companies uh, essentially to register themselves so they can be served process. Okay. So if you're a new carrier thing and you just started, you're in the process now. And come the end of September, um, if you're a private hazmat or exempt for hire, you'll have to post your insurance and you'll also have to get the VOC3 file. Okay. Uh, the third step of this is December 31st. Anyone that's an existing carrier, which a lot of the carriers in here are, if you're that private hazmat or you're the exempt for hire carrier, uh, you will by the end of the year you'll have to have your insurance filed. So uh, that that would basically be a million dollars because you wouldn't have to file 750 because private carriers don't really have the MCS 90 requirement. But if you haul hazmat across state lines, you do have the $1 million requirement. So that's where you would have to file this by the end of the year. So for those of you that are, already have companies set up, <coughs> you're private and you're hazmat, you're probably looking at this December 31st date. And then you also have the um, BOC3 requirement for a list of process agents. Okay. Next slide. So just to kind of summarize, I'm going to be out of here quick. Um, it's December 12th, last month, new new filings for new companies. Uh, where it all starts, phase two, September 30th. Um, the US is, URS is going to be fully op operational. Um, the DOT number is the sole identifier. No more docket number, MC number, FF number. Everything's filed through the MCS A1 form, which is on electronic online. Um, the registration is $300 per fee for DOT number and any type of authority, so you could be purchasing several authorities. <clears throat> the private has that, and then not the exempt for hire. You also have to file your insurance, and then you also have to do the BOC3. And then for everybody else, you have the December 31st date. That's really about all I have. Let me see if there's any additional. Oh, yeah, here's our contact information. Uh, I have some business cards I can pass out. I can also uh, you know, the contact center is this 1-800-832-5660 number. Uh, I think this is, is this going on all the, the flash drives? Yes. yes. So they can <clears throat> they can click on one of these, uh, get some of the information. I know one of the people in our office that should be extremely happy is Karen because she gets a lot of the faxed MCS 150 forms, which she keys in uh, by hand on each one of them. So come September 30th, she should be extremely happy and say, hey, I don't take that anymore. You'll have to do this all electronically. All right. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, we're going to get, so the yeah, updating your MCS 150, we won't be doing that then, Mike. We'll be basically updating the, the new form then. Like when we update right. MCS 150. Until September, if you're, a new, if you're an existing carrier, you'll still be doing the 150, the, that filing, okay? 
You can go in and, and uh, do it electronically if you want now. In fact, we prefer that rather than the fax copy. Uh, but come uh, September 30th, all carriers will have that requirement. The final requirement shouldn't be going away. You're still going to have the, the every two year requirement. But you'll be doing it online on the MCS A1 form. Great question. Yeah, 150 will be moved. 150 will be moved. Yep, we'll toss those, nothing else. And what else will be moved? Three forms. The MCS 150, the OP1, so that if you've ever had to apply for authority and <coughs> wait your four to six weeks for authority, that form's gone. And then the MCS 150B for the hazmat safety permitted carriers. That's all incorporated on that online process. Any other questions? What were your warrant? Does this uh, require all carriers to go on in and set up a formal account with the FMCSA? Does it require? No, you, sh you can go online and register outside of portal, but we definitely recommend that you do get a portal account. I think you were talking about earlier the, the CSA information and going on. It's definitely recommended. Um, in fact, this is it right here, the login to the portal. Uh, you can also go to the registrations page right here. Um, <coughs> And it should send you to our current registrations page now. If you're trying to get new authority, you'll, or a new DOT number, you'll go to the MCSA1 form. If you're an existing company, which it should, we go out and send you through the current register, the, the process we've been using for the last couple of years. But we would definitely recommend the portal. Go through the portal, get yourself set up, get logged in, um, and file, uh, file your updates that way, do all your registration that way, Look at your carrier information that way as well. Any other questions? Last one on the MCS 90. Is that going to be incorporated too on in this MCS uh, MCS one? Great question. Um, the rule hasn't changed. You still have to carry the MCS 90 at your location. You still have to have that, but your insurance company will have to submit an insurance filing to show your level of insurance, the million, or if you're a private carrier, you'd either be a million or five million. <laughs> If you're exempt for hire, you would have a coverage amount of 750 or 1 million, or possibly, I'm trying to think, exempt would probably, probably just be 750. If you're a million or 5 million, we think, well, I wonder if you're exempt, you, unless you're hauling materials that are going to, going to be, you know, hazardous materials that are going to the dump that have no value that may not be awarded. So, all right, any other questions? I'm down here. Oh, I'm sorry. So um, the 21-day waiting period, is that going to go away now? The 21-day waiting period for authority? No, the, 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 um, when you apply for authority, you still have to go through that protest period. Yeah. In fact, that's that vetting portion that we're going to do more of, and that's where we're hoping we're hoping this process will help us weed out the chameleon carriers or the those basically that's what we call them those that reincarnate because they've been placed out of service and they're unfit, unsound, and they're trying to get back into business. Getting 